Hello and welcome to episode 14 of my Football Manager 16 beta save. I'm Kev and as you can see from this rather handsome looking league table at the bottom here, we're turning the season around. Um, and it's kind of all thanks to going back to the old system, sort of. Um, coming up later in the show, we have got a live, cal live com of the away game to top of the table Man United. Or they were top of the table, actually. There's been some games played earlier in the day. Um, or earlier in the weekend, and they've actually dropped down to second, but they're level on points with Chelsea with a game in hand. Um, we're down in seventh place, um, again with a game in hand. A win in this game could put us up to fifth, and only two points away from a Champions League spot. It's bizarre how quickly this season has started to turn around for us. I've won the Premier League Manager of the Month for the second second week in a row, um, and if you look at the games that we've played since you were last with me, um, we started the month off with a really dull nil-nil draw at home to Fulham, um, and then it got even worse because we went away to Fulham in the Capital One Cup quarter final and lost one nil. Um, we controlled possession, but didn't really create anything at all. Um, and this was the last match that we played. The um, the deeper for the version of our four-two-three-one formation with the deeper line midfielders. In fact, because we changed the system partway through the game, it's actually showing the system that finished the match, which was us pushing back on to the sort of original version. It's kind of a hybrid of all the different formations that we've tried over the course of this season that we've settled on now. I'll show you the tactic in a minute once we've finished going through the matches. But as you can see from this run of games, it's led to five straight Premier League wins, and they're getting more and more impressive as we've gone. I know if you look at the teams we've played, we've not played the the cream of the Premier League crop. The big test is going to be against Man United States, the first big team we've played since we beat Arsenal back in November. I suppose Liverpool would argue they're a big team as well, but we beat them also. Um, the problem really earlier in the season was playing against the lesser teams and not picking up wins when we should have done. So the fact that we're now taking care of the, the smaller teams... Um, that's what's making a real difference to the way our season is going. But if we quickly look through these, um, we were at home to Swansea. Um, <laughs> not exactly the most impressive thing in the world. An Alex Witzel penalty um, giving us the 1-0 win. We created a lot of chances. You can see I was dabbling with a slight, another slight variant of the system in this game where we went to... I mean, this over the years in Football Manager has always been my preferred way of playing. It didn't really work for me in Football Manager 15. Um, so I haven't really tried it on 16 apart from in a couple of games this being one of them I still don't think it really works um certainly not with this Tottenham squad that I've got so this was a, a one game gam uh one game dabbling with that system really um but Harry Kane back in the side which is significant because he's kind of re-established himself as our top striker um which is unfortunate as he's fairly sure he's leaving during this transfer window um, but uh, what can you do? Um, we then 3 0 at home to Sunderland. Um, Chadley with a goal, Witzel with another penalty, and then a Witzel winner. Well, not winner, um, third goal um, right towards the end of the match. And you can see we're starting to dominate possession a little more. We're creating a lot of chances again to score three goals after the, the run of goal scoring starvation, if you like, we'd been on since the Arsenal game. Um, was really encouraging. And then we went and did it again in the next game, away to Crystal Palace. Um, we beat them 3-1. Um, their one was um, just nothing more than a consolation goal. We were already 3-0 up for that point. We were helped along a little bit in this match by the fact that they had a player sent off after 40 minutes and all our goals came after they went down to 10 men. But still, it was nice to dominate a match, um, get three goals we struggled a little bit for possession in that game but we were away from home so I'm not going to worry too much about that um, we went away to Stoke in the next game 1-0 um, win an Eric Lamella goal he's really coming on in the attacking midfielder role now obviously we're still without Christian Eriksen who's going to be out for most of the rest of the season um, so it's good to see Lamella establishing himself in that role. And it's really a reversal of how things were last season when we lost Lamella at around this time. And that's what led Eriksen to just basically play every game in that role and really establish that as his position. So it's a chance for Lamella to either make the position his own or even things back up again with uh, with Eriksen when he's back fully fit. Um, and then the last game of this run, um, at home to Huddersfield, 4-0 um, win. We didn't actually control possession as well as I'd liked, but we absolutely dominated for shots on t for, uh, shots and chances created. 
We won 4 0. We even had uh, Sule sent off after only 35 minutes. We were only 1 0 up when he got sent off, and we scored another three goals after that, so I was really impressed with his performance. Harry Kane picking up a couple of goals, Son and Van Persie scoring as well. Um, and yeah, it's going really well. If we look at the league table now um, and look at how our season has changed over the last two months, really. Um, if we go back to where were we at the end of October, we were down in 13th place and that was pretty much the highest we'd been all season as well. But since then, we've had a really good run of nine or ten games that have taken us back up to a position where halfway through the season, our pre-season aim of Champions League football is looking like it could be possible, especially if we can get something out of Man United today. At the very least, the board's minimum expectation is European qualification and we're in that mix and if we look at the form table um, we are currently the informed Premier League team unfortunately our opponents today Man United are second on that list so someone's dropping down the form table at the end of today but I'm more confident than I would have been earlier in the season playing this game and um, we're coming off the back of a good run of form and I really do want to see um, a bigger team test us against this formation because what we've done is we've gone back to the 4 2 3 1 that we used for most of last season but rather than doing the um, counter-attacking structured team shape with very few instructions I've kind of combined everything together that I've talked about in this season's videos and um, so we've gone back to this shape but we're still trying to control matches, we're staying fluid, we're keeping a lot of those team instructions on, um, so we're looking to play wide, pass into space, retain possession, be expressive, run at defence, so all that stuff that I've talked about before. Um, and yeah, it's it's been working quite well. This is the team that we're going with today. Um, Moussa Dembele has been able to force his way back into the side, um, now that we're playing with normal midfielders again. I am trying to retrain Wallace to be a central midfielder. He's a natural defensive midfielder at the moment. So what I've been doing is bringing Wallace on for Dembele with 20 minutes, half hour or so to go in each match, just to try and hurry that development along. And we've had a bit of an injury to Danny Rose. So Ben Davis has been uh, covering at left back, which was nicely timed for him, really, because he was on the verge of... Well, he did come to me for one of those, oh, I want to leave first team football meetings. Um, but because Rose was injured, we've been able to give him a little running the team. And um, yeah, he's waiting on a promise to solve his unhappiness. He has played every game since that meeting. So sooner or later, he's going to cheer himself up, hopefully for the rest of the season. Um, and other than that, the rest of the team is pretty much settled. Well, without Sully, because he got sent off in the last game. Uh, so we've got Alderweireld coming back in. I've got Kevin Wimmer. Wimmer however you say it. He's still around about the squad. Um, I've not got him on the bench today just because we've got um, Rose is coming back to fitness and I want him there in case we need to change the game late on. Um, and Kyle Walker is there as an option to really cover across the whole of the rest of the back four because if if Deer gets injured, Walker can slot straight in for him. If either of the centre-backs are injured, we can just move Deer across. So there's really not any benefit to Vimmer being on the bench. Um, in midfield, first choice is just Ritzel and, and Dembele. Um, Wallace is there as part of his retraining to come on if need be. And then going forward, Lamella is the only real choice as an, adva as an attacking midfielder apart from Van Persie. And we've then got Cern and Chadley out wide because they are our best wingers. Um, although we've got Mertens on the bench as well who could easily come on for either of them if needs must. Um, and then Harry Kane establishing himself as our top striker again. He's just become top scorer again after the Huddersfield game. Um, but Van Persie and Benteke are both scoring goals at the moment. Obviously, Van Persie could come on and, in theory, play anywhere across that, uh, that those three attacking players as well. And Benteke is very much a like-for-like -like change um, with Harry Kane. So this is the team that we're going with. I am a little bit unsure whether to stick with the control system we've been using or go to a counter-attacking system because we are away against the best team in the league. Um, and it really is a case of tossing a coin. We've been doing so well with control that I think I'm going to leave that on. It could go badly wrong and we could be 4-0 down after 10 minutes. If we are, we'll chalk that up to inexperience and I'll know that this formation works fine against the smaller clubs. But when we play the big guys, we need to go back to counter, which was what we were doing last season. Um, so it's a difficult decision because it's such an important game. Um, like I say, we could be two points away from Champions League football with a win. It's very unlikely that we'll get the win. Um, but a draw in a game like this, 
would be a fantastic result. Why are they talking at me so much? This is supposed to be quick little touchline comments, not five questions on my way to the pitch. Barely read them. Um, oh, <laughs> looking at this Man United team, they've got our old player Vertonghen at the back, and they've got the player they stole from us in the summer, Lukaku up front. Um, so I imagine it's it's written in written in the stars that Lukaku is going to score a hat trick today, um, especially as we're missing our first choice centre back, um, which exactly which is where Vertonghen would slot slot in if he was still at the club. So um, let's see how things turn out. Um, it'd be interesting to see how we do possession-wise against a better team. We have been kind of dominating it against the smaller clubs, but when we played against bigger teams like Arsenal, uh, Liverpool, Monaco earlier in the season, um, they were still dominating us for possession the way everybody was last season. So we shall see how it turns out, I guess. A uh, fairly quiet start to the match, which I guess when you're away... At Man United, it is no bad thing because uh, an exciting start to the match is only going to go is only going to go one way. We need to try and silence the crowd. Son's got the ball in a quite a dangerous position there. Back out to Dembele, Chadley into Kane. I know Kane can hit him from there, but he's put it through to Lamella, who's found Chadley. Oh, sorry, that was Davis. What was he doing all the way up there? I've still got Danny Rose's instructions on. <laughs> Danny Rose would have scored as well, probably, but Davis takes the corner. Um, it's cleared back out to Mario for Man United. Um, and that's the end of that little exciting spell. We've got a clear-cut chance there as well. I'm not sure I would call it a clear-cut chance when it's Ben Davis in that position. Um, pretty sure I would have preferred any other player on the pitch to have found himself with that chance. But if he'd have scored, he makes himself a hero. And we're doing okay for possession. I know we're only 12 minutes in, but we're not being hammered by them. Chadley's got the ball right on the edge of the air. He puts it out to Davis, who crosses into Harry Kane, back to Chadley. And that's another clear-cut chance. Hopefully it's not going to be one of those games where we start to regret some of these misses, because that was a Harry Kane chance. And Chadley's been scoring plenty of goals from that kind of position as well. Why has Kane got the ball all the way back there? He was our second deepest player at that point. He needs to be in the box waiting for someone to lump it back into him. But this is encouraging. We're creating chances. There's not been a Man United highlight yet. I know I'm tempting fate, but we've now got another one. So Lamella now with the ball. Over to Witzel, who finds Kane in the area. But Kane is dispossessed by Vertonghen, who plays a through ball to Lukaku. This is that combination I feared before the match. Lukaku again. Back to... Oh, where's that gone? It's gone all the way back to Mario now. We need to get the ball off, and that's it. End of highlight. I can live with that. They didn't actually get a shot away in that move which baffles me a little bit when sometimes you get a, a match where you have 25 shots and only two highlights that you get situations like that where a highlight is deemed necessary and it doesn't even result in a shot but who am I to question the uh, the mighty match engine oh, Man United corner we don't want to see this let's just get this ball away um, do you, oh, who's that Douglas Costa never heard of him again that's Probably me making a fool of myself against anyone who follows the Premier League. Sun with the ball now. Crosses it in. Oh, if only that could have found Kane. Then Bele now out to Chadley, who does find Kane. And Kane scores on the rebound. That's four clear cut chances now, and he's finally put one in. And we are, albeit temporarily, up to fifth place, and we are in the lead at Old Trafford. I think this has been put down as two clear-cut chances for Kane here because the first one, he is in a great position. That's a clear-cut chance there. But that's saved, but then he does put the rebound away, which is a harder chance, really. But with the goalkeeper already out of position, he does very well to finish that with his weaker foot. Right, we'll have full time now, please. And then I'd say I'm now back in that that difficult situation again. Should I drop to counter-attacking now? We're 1-0 up at Old Trafford. Should we really be trying to control the game? But if we switch to counter, are we just inviting them to spend the next hour attacking at us? My natural instinct is to keep keep on control at least for the next, at least until the end of the half. And then sort of reevaluate where things are at half time. We're 50-50 for possession. We've created more chances. What we don't want to do with an hour of the game still to go is to invite Man United back into the game. So it's been a very even match so far. And if we just let them attack us for an hour, I don't know if we're strong enough defensively or strong enough on the counter-attack to punish them for it. We've got Douglas Costa now on a mazy run. Goes past Sun. 
um, finds Mata, and that's a good save from Loris, and that's United's first clear-cut chance of the game. We've now got a Mata corner, intercepted by Witzel. By Witzel. Can't even speak. It's because my mouth still doesn't know whether he's Witzel or Witzel. I'm going to go Witzel, I think. I don't even kind of remember what nationality he is. Is he Belgian? The Belgians say Witzel or Witzel. Let me know in the comments, because I have no idea. I've only ever heard of this guy in Football Manager, which shows how much attention I pay to European and international football, really, in real life. Um, right. Yes, the media have given us, a lot, given us a lot of credit lately. Go on and put on a worthy display. Everyone's motivated. I can't bring myself to go to counter-attacking. Not yet, anyway. Again, I might come to regret it, but... That's the sort of thing I might do with 20, 25 minutes to go if it looks like we're starting to struggle anyway. I don't want to, when we're even in the game and we're attacking and we're doing well, I don't want to invite United back into it. If they force their way back into it anyway, at that point, that's when I'm going to look to switch to a counter and punish them for it. But I don't want to be responsible for turning the game on its head. United have made a double substitution after only 50 minutes. They've brought Wayne Rooney on now. Um, was that Lukaku went off? Because that's that's rather nice if we've managed to mark him out of the game with a, well, a back four that contains two reserve players, which is the which is my other fear about going to counter attacking. If we had the full first choice back four. Um, I might be more inclined to do it and expect our defence to soak up the pressure, but there are a few question marks, well, two specifically, about that defence. United have made their third substitution. There's still half an hour of this game left. I'm tempted, and it's it's so cynical, but I'm tempted to tell the team to get stuck in, um, purely because there's half an hour left. Let's kick them a bit. We've not picked up any yellow cards yet. We can afford to give them a couple of kicks. It's not how I would like to see football played in real life. But you know what? Don't make all your substitutions with half an hour of the game till it go. Because I'm just going to go and kick you and make you regret it. Right, Lamella's done a lovely ball over to Kane. Kane's too far out to be effective. But he has found Witzel. He's brought it back over to Kane. And now Chadley. And it's 2-0 up. Wow. That was a lovely piece of counter-attacking football. And that is the advantage of having Harry Kane in the team. He held the ball up brilliantly there and was involved in two parts of the move and picks up the assist deservedly. That's why when Harry Kane's playing like that, he makes such a difference to the team. Why can't we just have him like that all the time? I guess he's trying to show off for United and get them to come and spend 40 million quid on him. But when he plays like this, I don't want him to go. Right, Lamella isn't having the best game. So I'm going to bring Robin Van Persie on for his Old Trafford return, um, playing as an uh, attacking midfielder. Um, and I'm also going to bring Wallace on. We've got 20 minutes left. Continue Wallace's retraining to be a um, to be a central midfielder. Um, I'm going to take Dembele off, even though he's having a slightly better game than Witzel. I'm just more comfortable with Witzel. He's been a real key man for us this season. And I'm much more comfortable having him on the pitch than Dembele, who's never really done it for me. And I've mentioned that to a couple of Spurs fans in real life, and they've looked at me in horror. Um, so I guess he's better in real life than he is in the game, maybe. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd happily let him go in this transfer window, even though we are a little light on, attack it, on central midfielders. Letting him go would allow me to really go out and buy a good one. Um, oh, matter there. That's another good save from Loris. We've got 15 minutes left to go. We haven't been able to injure any of the United players yet. Um, right, Sun's intercepted there and he's found Harry Kane. And we've got two on two there. But it's slowed down a little bit. But Witzel has found Chadley and that is an excellent save from uh, David De Gea. And Van Persie now with the corner. It's made its way out to Kane, who again is very deep off the back of these corners. I might need to have a look at my set-piece instructions, because Kane needs to be staying in the six-yard box. He doesn't need to be the player dropping out on the edge of the area when the ball drops free. We've got players who are much more suited to doing that than Harry Kane is. Right, getting ready to make my third substitution, at which point, especially now I've picked up a yellow card, I'm just going to tell the players just to ease off a bit now. 
we had our fun with kicking them a little bit. What we don't want is to get a player sent off or to get one of our own players injured with some kind of impact injury from going in on too hard a tackle if we're going to be using up all our substitutions as well. So I think I'm going to bring Sun off and bring Mertens on just because he offers some fresh legs. He's very effective out wide. It, he would have been the hardest decision before the match about whether or not to play him or Sun um, because he does have the ability to be a match winner. And with 10 minutes to go, he's not the player United are going to want to see coming off the bench. See, now, even now, I'm reluctant to go to counter because we're still 50-50. It's still an even game. And I don't want to I don't want to invite them to attack us for the last 10 minutes. I think if we conceded a goal, we'd just go ultra-defensive. Or contain, I think it's called these days, isn't it? That was a throwback to old football manager there. He used to be called that, maybe. See, I'm so confident we've got it won. I'm reminiscing about championship manager now. This is about as good as we could have hoped for from this match because they're not getting back into it now. Even if they score here, they've not got time to score twice, surely. And they're offside anyway. And that is 2-0 at Old Trafford. And that is a fantastic result. Um, yes, well done. That was a good win for us. Everyone's delighted. And we are up to fifth in the table. There's still only 20 games played. We're two points behind Arsenal. Um, and we've beaten Arsenal away this year. we put four goals past them. Champion, Champions League football is going to be a possibility. Um, right. Obviously, if you've enjoyed that video... Make sure you put a like on there for me. I would like to get us up to 20 likes again on this episode. We've only done it a couple of times this series so far. So I would like to get 20 likes on there. It would be, uh, would be a good achievement. And let me know in the comments what you think I should do in the transfer window. It's the 1st of January. Um, Harry Kane wants to leave. Should I let him go? You've just seen the performance he's putting against Man United. Um, if I let him go, how much for? Um, do I need to bring in another striker or do I make do with the three that I've got? Obviously, they were all signed with the intention of being the Kane replacement. Um, and what about the midfield? Should I be letting Dembele go? Should I be looking to bring someone in regardless? At this stage, my thoughts are let Kane and Dembele go um, and use the money just to go out and buy a real world-class central midfielder, um, if I can find one in January. Um, but let me know in the comments what are your thoughts. What would you do from this point on? And do you think we'll make it into the Champions League at the end of the season? Uh, make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss out on tomorrow's episode. Thanks very much for watching.